Hey everyone, welcome to my Kerbal Space Program keys and controls sort of tutorial slash know what the hell are you supposed to be pushing. So, when you do start off with the game and you do end up on the launch pad, you're going to have a bunch of keys that I will find very useful. Actually, you will find very useful to know before you even start playing the game. Now, of course, when you do get your rocket, the uh, main keys would be uh, the left shift. And you'll see your accelerator goes up and the left control, it goes back down. This pretty much is the throttle. So left chip up, control back down. The other thing is that you would find useful is spacebar. Spacebar, of course, starts the staging. So when I hit spacebar, it'll start off with the last stage. And when I hit spacebar, it'll launch the other stage. So if we do that now and I hit spacebar, it will, of course, launch my rocket into space. Now, another thing as well, it's useful to know is T. T, of course, is to activate my SAS, and T again is to deactivate it, and T again is to activate it. And then R is to activate my RCS, and R again is to switch it off. So uh, this is useful in terms of these keys. Now, of course, you can move around using the W, A, S, and D keys. If I put W, I move down. I will slowly move down because it's a bloody big ship. But you do see that I'm moving slowly down, and if I use D, then I'm going to move to the right, slowly to the right, and if I use A, I'm going to move slowly to the left, and of course S, I will move slowly upwards. So A, W, A, S, and D help you move the keys around, Shift and Control help you accelerate and decelerate your throttle. Which brings us to our next point. Now, the next point would be time warp. Time warp, it's uh, the uh, full stop on your keyboard, which is right close to your uh, right control button on your keyboard. So you have the full stop or the, uh, I don't know how to put it, lesser than icon that increases your time warp. As you see, that's pretty cool in case you don't want to use the actual top left for time warp. And of course, the uh, comma, reduces time warp. The full stop increases, the comma reduces. That's pretty much it. Of course you can use time warp from here, but it's good to know that you can use the keyboard as a full stop. Increases time warp. Every time you hit it, it increases by a bit and full stop decreases time warp. So this is also very useful to know. Now another important thing of course to know is X actually kills off immediately all the uh, throttle that you have. So as I mentioned before, the left shift increases slowly, the uh, right, uh, the left control decreases speed, but if you hit X, immediately it cuts off all the engines. So that's good to know in case you want to immediately cut off your engines at any point whatsoever. So that's uh, really cool to cut your engines off immediately. Now another cool thing to keep in mind is Alt and L. Alt L of course locks the stage. So now when I hit spacebar, and I'm hitting it now a lot, it doesn't of course release my next stage. So that's pretty cool in case you have maybe some final parts that you don't want to stage up or release the stage until you get there. So you can lock your staging by pushing Alt and L, that locks your stage. For example, now I know one of my stages is finished and I do want to release it. So when I hit space, nothing. So I'm going to hit Alt and L and then I'm going to hit space and then it will release that stage and I'm going to hit Alt and L again and like that I relock my stage. That's pretty cool as well in terms of depending on how your setup is for the actual build. And once you're done with that, the next cool thing to know is brackets. Brackets, the square brackets beside your enter keys, you have the uh, two square brackets that you have. So if you hit the square brackets, you will rotate between different objects or different ships or space planes or uh, different objects close by. As long as I think they're below 150 meters, I presume so. This is, I'm just throwing numbers out of my head, but I think it's something around that. You should be able to switch between different objects. So that's pretty cool. You can, of course, go clockwise, anti-clockwise, depending which bracket you use. That's also in handy. Now, when you do actually get your astronaut on the ground, of course, uh, you can walk around. Now, to activate his actual thruster pack, you're going to hit R. And he's going to pull out his thruster pack. And now you're going to use your actual RCS, that being W, A, S, and D. And, of course, Shift and Control. Shift will shoot you up. Control will shoot you right back down. So, and, of course, the W key moves you forward. The A, D key and the A key moves you left. The D key moves you right. And Shift moves you up. And there is a limit to it, so you do see you have fuel in 89, 88, 90, but you can of course refuel your RCS pack when you do get back to your command pod. So if you're close by, just jump back to your command pod, refuel it, and take care of that. If you're new to the game, I would recommend you go to the moon and uh, toy around with the RCS quite a lot until you do get the hang of uh, moving around with your actual unit. So this is in relation to using your RCS and of course switching between different things on Minimus. 
or anywhere else. Now, the next thing, one of the most useful things, I would presume, is to quick load and quick save. Holding F9 will quick load, if you see it's shown up on the right side. Hold F9 to quick load, and F5 will quick save. Quick saving, I just pushed that. Now, you can only quick save if you're not accelerating. So if I'm in a ship and my actual thrusters aren't on, it won't quick save. This is really cool in case you want to try your docking. You hit F5, quick save it, try it, mess it up. You hold F9, reload it, and retry that again. So this is also a very useful thing to know. Now, in terms of the RCS using it with the ship, you have the WAS and D. It means the tip will only move. As you see, the tip is moving if I'm using W, A, S, and D. And uh, the other keys that you do have for the RCS, also for the ship, is I, J, K, and L. So if we do L, we're going to be moving the whole ship as a whole to the left. And if we're going to be doing J, the whole ship is going to be moving to the right. The whole ship, this one, is just moving as it is to the right. The whole thing. It's not only turning the tip of the ship. When I'm using W, A, S, and D, it's just turning the, uh, the actual uh, point, the top part of the ship, in a certain direction. But when you use I, K, and L, and J, the whole ship either moves to the left, the whole ship either moves to the right, or up, or down. Now, of course, you have H and N. H, hold on, let's just take, I'll switch on RCS. H, on the other hand, moves the ship forward. So you can use this to accelerate. Or you can do N, and you see the RCS is blowing the opposite way, which means your ship will decelerate. So this is another cool thing to do in terms of your actual RCS. Now, another cool thing to keep in mind, of course, is in terms of construction. Now, one of the most useful keys, of course, in construction is W, A, S, and D. You rotate your actual parts, so that being anything you want, you can rotate using W, A, S, and D, including Q and E as well. Yes, do keep that in mind. Now, Q and E, of course, also do apply in terms of your RCS, in terms of your movement as well. It's diagonal left Q and diagonal right E as well, so keep that in mind that you can use Q and E. Now... In terms of construction, one really useful tool is the actual shift key. For example, the, if you hold down shift and then use W, A, S, and D, you can actually move the parts by 5 degree increments, which is uh, actually quite amazing because sometimes you do need to make very, very small adjustments. So keep that in mind that the shift key, holding the shift key and then using the W, A, S, D, Q, and E keys actually moves the actual uh, parts at a, a five degree angle so that's something to cool to keep in mind and another cool thing is in case you do mess up such as adding a part moving a part deleting a part or just sticking a part where you don't want it to you can of course hold ctrl z to undo that and it will undo the mistake that you have did previously that being of course putting adding parts deleting parts anything that you pretty much do it will fix that so that's it now, another thing to keep in mind that uh, you could do in terms of uh, your actual Kerbal now is when you do go close to a damaged wheel or a damaged part, hopefully in the later future, and you right-click, you can, of course, repair that wheel or part. And uh, you can do the same thing in terms of parachutes. You right-click the parachute and it actually repacks. So that's another cool thing to keep in mind. And now to plant a flag, you right-click your Kerbal and you can plant your flag. So that's pretty much it in terms of this and the uh, final thing i would cover in terms of selecting your flag it's on the home page you of course select your flag and then you pick your actual flag that you'd like to use well this is it for the uh, standard keys that most of you should know before you start playing or while you're playing of course there's many many more keys and uh, different types of controls that you can do such as scrolling forward scrolling back uh, holding your scroll uh, wheel down and then moving around uh, that moves the actual view when you are staring at your ship or anything else so that might come in handy as well and of course a hundred more keys uh, that you could use i will put the link below and you can obviously download the whole list of all possible functions and short hotkeys that you can use with this game so i hope this helped you out and as always happy gaming don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you guys later bye